When he came into office, Gauteng Premier Banya Zalesufi made fighting crime one of his priorities. So a budget-friendly crime fighting unit was established, the Crime Prevention Wardens, known informally as Amabanyaza. Several thousand are deployed around the province. Despite being hastily trained, they carry weapons and often operate with the police. But are they really helping? Bongani has the story. to be a spike in cash and transit heists in the country, particularly in Gauteng, Eastern Cape and... Quasi Crime South in South Africa cash is out of control. Yet more evidence that South Africa is losing the battle against... Incidents of housebreaking, home robbery, assault and murder have been on the rise. Gauteng, the country's economic hub, is plagued by violent incidents. Our murder rate is now around 46 murders per 100,000 compared to the global average of six murders per 100,000. Between April and June this year, there were 1,489 murders. There were, I think, nearly 10,000 rapes. There were 7,000 robberies. But Houting's premier, Banyaza Lesufi, has a plan. 6,000 young people have been recruited to go to training so that they can be combat ready to patrol our communities from the 1st of May, 2023. This is a strong message to criminals. We are ready to confront you wherever you are. I was not a criminal. I didn't commit any crime, but I was treated like a criminal. Eleven Diagonal Street, once the seat of the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, the hub of the city's financial district. But that was a long time ago. Many businesses have left because of crime. Well, not under my watch, says this Premier. At the State of the Province address in February, he unveiled a bold initiative. The issue of fighting crime should be our apex priority. We are increasing the budget of fighting crime in our province from 750 million to multi-billion rents in the next three years. And so Premier Lesufi launched the Crime Prevention Wardens, taking to social media to advertise 6,000 posts. Within weeks, he was ready to unveil his cadets. I can see now you are fit and proper. I'm releasing you to each and every township. Those that don't respect you, they will regret. But as soon as they hit the ground, there were problems. I think I was the first person to really kind of start to dig deep and, and, and look into the systems and the policies around uh, this initiative. Mark Haywood is the editor of the online publication Maverick Citizen. He received a call from a desperate mother who alleged her son had been assaulted. There had been some stuff in the media. Of course, there had been some questions about whether the training was adequate. There was an allegation that they had been involved in the murder of an alleged drug dealer, which had been denied. 30-year-old call centre agent Andrew Mage says it was the crime wardens. I heard a commotion that was happening outside. So I opened my door. Uh, I saw a bunch of guys in like these green overalls and uh, barats on and, uh, and the ski masks. Andrew was at home lying on his bed. It was mid morning in the middle of the week. His off day, he was resting. He had no idea how his life was about to change. They then came to my door said they would also like to search in my room as well because a, they received the information that there's someone on this property that is selling drugs to school children and so forth. Before they even began their search, I declared that I have my own cannabis. I showed it to them. It was in like a small little uh, peanut butter jar. I said, this is what I use on my personal use. Other than that, you, can, you may go ahead and search the room. 
They went in like the, my bags and my clothing as well. They threw everything onto the floor. Some of them were shouting from the outside that uh, they should check in the inside the, the grocery. So that's when they started throwing out like my mealy meal, my, 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 my rice, my macaroni was thrown out on the floor. But that was only the start of his ordeal. A week later, they were back. But this time, he demanded a search warrant. That's when most of them went ballistic. They said, obviously, there must be something that you are hiding if you don't want us to search. We're going to search even if we have to forcibly come in. And that's when Andrew says things took a turn for the worst. After ransacking his room once more, they demanded his small jar of cannabis. He refused. One of them picked me up and then he threw me against the wall. And it was just an onslaught of abuse at that moment. I was on the floor covering my head like this. I could feel boots hitting my ribs, knocks coming to my head. Some of them kicked me in my groin area, in my bum area. It's doop, 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 doop. Yeah, you, you think you're smart. Doop, 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 doop. Or you, you think you're clever. Goop, goop, goop. I'm just screaming, stop, stop, please stop. When they stopped, the first thing Andrew did was call his mother. She was shocked when she got to him. He was like half dead animal. The way he was, he, he, he was like, it's not my son I know. Lying there doing nothing and then I'd say, what made them to do this to you? They almost killed my son. Andrew sustained such severe injuries, he now relies on a catheter to urinate and is still undergoing extensive urology treatment. This hardly surprised Mandla Nyakaela, a former crime prevention warden. No, I was not surprised to hear that these guys were beating up members of the public because some of the trainers were former correctional service officials. And you can imagine someone who was a correctional service official who dealt with inmates. So there was this notion that they needed to get out of us a soft man and put in a strong man who is going to combat against crime and criminals. It felt like we're just being trained for brutalism. Fighting crime is the Premier's apex priority, he says. But are his 6,000 crime prevention wardens preventing crime or creating it? The Gauteng Premier spokesperson, Sizwe Pamla, is aware of Andrew's allegations. There is currently an investigation that is taking place with regards to the allegations from uh, Katlehong where it is alleged that in the course of doing their work, they allegedly manhandled uh, a citizen there. But Sizwe argues crime fighting is serious business. These people police townships, informal settlements, hostels. These are some of the most violent areas uh, in this province. During training of any law enforcement uh, units, there are people who quit because once they realize what is it that is going to confront them on the streets, they say, I'm not ready for this. Mandla is a member of a community police forum. He says he joined Amapanyaza with high expectations, but eventually quit. We, we did aerobics, we did push-ups, sit-ups, we, we, we ran around the camp. Yeah, basically, uh, nothing else. And, and we, they, they, they taught us drill also. Left, right, left, left, right, left. Police searches are conducted under strict regulations. At the very least, officers must identify themselves. So why do so many allege these wardens cover their faces? That's actually not true. This is not some vigilante militia that is operating outside of the law. That uniform is inspected by SAPS as and when they walk in for duty. Whatever mask that they wear, they wear it nine out of 10 at night because of cold. Manda has an entirely different reason. So many of these crime prevention warrants officers are members of the same community that they go back to raid. They raid drug dealers' houses, they, they raid shebeens and all of that. So I think they hide their faces just to protect their identity. At the parade where these cadets were unveiled, some of them were holding guns and rifles. 
that seems an odd thing for people who are going to be going and doing essentially support services in community policing. You are policing a volatile province. You are not going to send people with batons. With rifles, though? Yes. What we expect crime wardens to bring into a fight where AK-47 are being wielded about on the streets? Batons. No. It's unacceptable. People should not pretend as if they have no appreciation of what crime levels look like in this country, just because they are discussing uh, crime wardens. Clever explanations, ready answers. But what is accountable government, if not the ability to hear the most vulnerable, those who've been abused, who say to you, something happened here that shouldn't have happened? He doesn't have justice. I mean, he's suffered terrible pain. He has ha had his body badly, badly damaged. He hasn't been able to urinate for two and a half months. I've had him on the phone in tears. I've had his mum on the phone in tears, devastated. He's lost his job. I mean, he has contemplated suicide uh, on instances. Mum, how does it feel to look at your son with this bag? It's not fair. He doesn't see himself as a man. And then also, with these things, you think I'm gonna get my grandchildren? No, I don't think so, the way they beat him. I'm sorry this happened to you. They are coward to those people. Even their apartheid was better than this apartheid. None of my family was beaten in apartheid day.